Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem Div 01. In this one, I'm gonna put your knowledge of accounting for dividends to the test. So part one, Flyercore has 200,000 shares of $4 par value common stock and 25,000 shares of $12 par value, 5% non-cumulative preferred stock outstanding. It's a mouthful talking about preferred stock. Um, on November 1st, Flyercore declares a cash dividend for preferred shareholders of record on November 15th, which is payable on December 2nd. Your goal is to record the dividend-related journal entries. So take a moment, try this for yourself. When you're ready, come on back. I'll walk you through the solution. All right, welcome back. So note here that it says on November 1st, Flyercore declares a cash dividend for preferred shareholders of record as of November 15th. Therefore, all of this information up front about the common stock, we can simply ignore that. We're instead going to focus on the preferred shareholders. And since this is non-cumulative preferred stock, all we need to worry about is how much are they entitled to in any given year? We don't need to worry about any back pay from prior years that might have been missed. Now, to calculate that, we know that the par value of the preferred stock is $12 per share. So we're going to put $12 par preferred shareholders. We know that they are entitled to a 5% return or a 5% dividend, so times 0.05. And that's going to work out to a 60 cent dividend per share. We also know that there are 25,000 shares of preferred stock currently outstanding, therefore times 25,000. Here, I'll pull out my calculator, 0. 0.6 times 25,000 works out to $15,000 is the total dividend that the company will need to issue to the preferred shareholders. So now that we know how much the dividend is, let's revisit the journal entry, which was the goal of the problem. On November 1st, Flyercore is declaring the cash dividend. So on that day, we are going to remove the dividend from retained earnings. Or if you were doing the temporary account approach, you would record a temporary account called cash dividends that you will later close to retained earnings either way. We are also obligated on that day to go ahead and pay this cash out. So we're going to create a liability for the future payment of cash called dividend payable or dividends payable either way. And of course, we already figured out that it is $15,000. On November 15th, that is the date of record for the preferred shareholders to be holding the stock in order to receive the dividend. Nothing actually happens from an accounting standpoint on that date. Therefore, we need no journal entry then. However, we are going to pay the dividend on December 2nd. So on that day, we reduce our liability. Debit dividends payable. 15,000 because we have now paid out the cash, credit cash, 15,000. And those are all the journal entries we need for this example. All right, here we go with part two. Flyercore has 200,000 shares of $4 par value common stock, 25,000 shares of $8 par value, 10% non-cumulative preferred stock outstanding. If Flyercore declares a $70,000 cash dividend, how much cash will each share of common stock receive? All right, take a moment, pause the video, see if you can do this one on your own. When you're ready, come on back, I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So here we go. First off, we already know that the total dividend is going to be $70,000. And it's not asking us to do journal entries. We simply need to figure out how much of that 70,000 gets paid out per share of common stock. Now, the first thing that we need to realize is that preferred shareholders have priority to the dividend. So they are going to get paid first, and then any leftovers go to the common shareholders. So just like on the last slide, we are now going to have to figure out, well, how much do these preferred shareholders get paid? We know that the preferred shareholders have an $8 par value on their stock, so $8 par for the preferred shareholders. We know that they are entitled to a 10% dividend, so times 0.10. That works out to 80 cents per share div for preferred shareholders. We know that there are 25,000 shares outstanding. 
Pull out my calculator for this one, 0.8 times 25,000. That works out to $20,000 is the dividend that we're going to have to give to the preferred shareholders. All right, let's do a little bit more math now. Remember, the goal is to figure out how much is each common share receiving. We know that there was a $70,000 total dividend. We now know that we need to take 20000 of it away for the preferred shareholders. That's going to leave us with $50,000 for the common shareholders, and that is going to get divvied out equally over 200,000 shares of common stock. CS shares. And if my math serves me correct, that means that we are looking at a 25 cent dividend per share of common stock. And that is the answer to our question. All right, that's it for this practice problem. Hope you found this helpful and I hope you join me for another.